So since I didn't delete the previous um, results, they are still visible, but I can tell by looking at the element, I'm looking for S11 and S22, and they should be for the same element, and that's element number 66, what it looks like. So I'm going to combine S11 and S22, and I'm going to save that as <coughs> And then I'll say, all right, let's plot it to see what this looks like. Ooh, what does that look like? Uh, let's see if we can make sense of the results here. Let's see if I can ask it to show me all the data plots, make the symbols a little bit large. All right. So in that first step, we had applied S11, and it went to 50 KSI. That makes sense. It was a perfectly plastic material. We first stretched it to 50 KSI. That's where S11 is 50 and S22 is equal to zero. But in the second step, but in the second step, we stretched it both in one and two directions. And what's happening? The data points are moving. This, how the data points are moving, seems to be a dead giveaway as to what this looks like. This looks like part of the von Mises ellipse. But I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this data, pull it out, and plot it on top of the von Mises ellipse to make sure that truly, after yielding, all the stress states were essentially moving on the von Mises ellipse. You can see that in the second step, the stresses S11 actually went up from 50 to about uh, what looks like 55 or so KSI, while S22 also kept changing. And this is where we ended up uh, after it had been completely stretched to 1% in both directions. So this is very valuable. It's showing me how the behavior is occurring and whether the stress states of a perfectly plastic material are just moving on that von Mises ellipse. But I also want to see the prandtl royce relations. I want to see whether flow, plastic flow, occurred according to the associated flow rule. What does that mean? It means that the flow will always occur in the direction normal to the yield surface, or you could say that it occurs in accordance with prandtl royce relations, where d epsilon 1 1 plastic divided by S11 is equal to d epsilon 2 to plastic divided by s2. So I'm really curious about how I'm going to show all of this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a bunch of the results from this uh, from this uh, from this analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tool x y. First I need to get rid of all the old stuff so I don't get confused and write uh, or plot incorrect information. So I'm getting rid of all of that. And I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to say tools x y data create ODB field output, and this time I'm going to store everything. So what all am I going to store from this analysis? Well, I would like to have, certainly have E11 and E22. I would like to have uh, the plastic strain increment, PE11, PE22. I'd really like that. I would like to have this term PEEQ, and I'll tell you what that is later. It's, in fact, the most important thing. It's the reason why we're doing this exercise, but I'll tell you what it is a little bit later. I want to pull out the corresponding stresses, S11 and S22. That makes sense. Anything else? I could pull out the von Mises stress if I wanted, but uh, I'm going to save that for now. I'm not going to pull it out. Um, Oh, all right, I'll state the von Mises stresses as well. Um, these are all going to be stored at the integration point, and the elements that I'm going to be picking are, I'm just going to pick any one element. It's all going to be the same because I've created an idealized situation that is uh, subjecting it to pure stress and strain states. I'm going to save all of this data. Now that I've saved all that data, I want to really be able to manipulate it, plot it, look at it in more detail. But I can't do that. I mean, Abacus gives me a plotting tool and all of that, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to be that adept at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this data and I'm going to put it out in a report. I'm going to ask it to report the XY information, all the XY data that I've just saved, 
and I'll ask it to save it in a file called CE592, perfect plasticity. I want a single table for all the XY data. I'm going to write it all out. I'm going to click OK. And now the XY report was appended to the file CE592 perfectplasticity.rpt. Now what I want to do is take this file and import it into Excel. This is easier said than done because I'm going to have to download that file and import it into Excel so that I can really start looking at the results and start manipulating, trying to understand how exactly does perfect plasticity work? Does it follow the Prandtl-Royce relations? Do the data points move on the S11, S22 space? All right, I will do that. 